Highway getting ready to pull building six. Silverstein, a commercial real estate tycoon with international political connections, acquired a 99-year lease on the World Trade Center complex in the spring of 2001. Throughout the summer, he reworked the insurance policies on his new property, making sure that it was covered for acts of terrorism. Explicit in the lease agreement was Silverstein's right to rebuild the complex if it were destroyed. After 9-11, Mr. Silverstein fought his insurers in court to obtain double his policy limits for the destruction of his property, maintaining that the double hijacking constituted two disasters caused by terrorists, not just one. In all, he collected over $8 billion, a magnificent return on his original $14 million investment. My first reaction is to think about the families uh, of those people, the tragedy, the magnitude of it. Um, however, I firmly believe that we should rebuild. Just in the last few seconds, another building, building number seven, one of the buildings uh, in support of the World Trade Center towers has collapsed. World Trade 7, functioning as the command center for the complex, housed giant diesel backup and oxygen systems, the mayor's protected emergency bunker, and offices for the CIA, Secret Service, Department of Defense, and Securities and Exchange Commission. Its other tenants were insurance companies, brokerages, and banks. No plane hit Building 7, but at 5.20 p.m. on September 11th, it collapsed in a heap on the ground. Some damage to Building 7 is said to have been caused by debris from Tower 1, though this New York Times article tells us Building 7 burned like a giant torch, the only visuals that exist are of unidentified smoke and a few small fires. Compare this to the wallop sustained by World Trade Center 3, 4, 5, and 6. Positioned right below the towers, damage to the surrounding World Trade Center buildings was infinitely worse. Still, the structures held up. But somehow, rescue workers knew that Building 7 would fall. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It'll be coming down soon. They said, hey, you know, like, you got to stay behind this line because they're thinking about taking this building down. They're not sure if it's uh, stable or not. So they were holding a line off because they had knowledge that something was going to happen. Get out of here. All right? Go. In this live BBC footage from September 11th, reporter Jane Stanley announces the collapse of Building 7 while it is still intact in the window behind her. How did BBC know this in advance of the event? Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. There's almost a sense downtown in uh, New York behind me, down by the World Trade Centers, of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job. But this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result. We know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash, and we know that behind that there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared now, and New York is still unable to take on board what has happened to them today. Presumably there were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean, th there were, I suppose, fears. A 47-story skyscraper, Building 7 folded neatly in six and a half seconds, a textbook descent right into its footprint. Silverstein Properties now tells us that its owner was referring to the team of firefighters inside the building when he spoke of the decision to pull. 
pulling the firemen out of harm's way. However, there were no firefighters in Building 7, according to FEMA, NIST, and Fire Chief Frank Fellini. They were ordered out at 11.30 that morning. Six hours later, the building came down. You know, we heard this, this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. Turned around, it looked like there was um, a shock wave ripping through the building, and the windows all busted out, and you know, it was horrifying. About a second later, the bottom floor caves out, and uh, the building followed after that. Radio host Alex Jones notes the mark of a classic implosion. This is a photo taken one second into Building 7's collapse. Notice the crimp. If we look at other controlled demolitions, we see that they first blow one of the central columns so the building falls in on itself. If you don't do this, the building falls outward and can damage surrounding structures. Building 7 had a classic crimp or wedge. Its central column was blown out first so it didn't structurally damage buildings just a few feet away from it. Remember the mayor's emergency bunker? Ensconced on the 23rd floor of Building 7, it was retrofitted with super glass, water, oxygen, and its own generator. But Mayor Giuliani chose to find emergency shelter elsewhere on September 11th. Why Building 7? Its structure was heavily reinforced. As the WTC command center, was it the hub for the 9-11 plan? Also, in six and a half seconds, lost forever were thousands of SEC case files on corporate fraud, including those relating to the notorious activities of giants WorldCom and Enron. A few indictments for stock fraud, but what of the $70 billion California electricity swindle? It disappeared. No one died in the collapse of Building 7. It was vacated well in advance of its implosion, but not the Twin Towers. Why weren't police, firemen, and civilians in these buildings told what to expect? Tragically, employees in the towers were advised to return to their offices. The announcement came on that everything was fine. Tower 1, they were evacuating, but Tower 2 was fine, and we could go back to our offices. We were about to go through the turnstile. The security guard says, where you guys are going? I said, well, I'm going home because I saw fireballs coming down. He said, no, your building is safe. It's secured. It is safer to stay in your building. Go back to your office. Stanley Priamnath returned to the 81st floor. Then... I just happened to raise my head looking straight towards the Statue of Liberty, and what I saw was a giant airplane coming straight towards me. The South Tower was hit between the 78th and 84th floors. Trapped on the 81st floor by crushing debris, Stanley was rescued by Brian Clark. Slowly and painfully, they made their way down a stairwell to freedom. Outside, Stanley had a feeling of uncanny prescience for what was to come. And we peered through the railing, up through the trees at the tower, and Stanley said, you know, I think that tower could come down. And I don't know why I'm telling this man this building is going. But I knew it was not 